Night Live Church. Let's stand on our feet. Let's get ready to put our hands together for night for a revival. Great things are happening in the house. They're going to happen tonight. Let's put our hands together. Let's worship the Lord.
Do you adore him tonight? Here we are at night four of what has been by far the best revival we've ever had as a church. Psalm 40. This morning I ran across it during my devotional time and I thought it was so fitting for where many of us have been and God has done for us through these services. But Psalm 40, verse 1, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He turned and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, <laughs> out of the mud and out of the mire, and He set my feet on a rock, and He gave me a firm place to stand. I like this, number 3, verse 3. He put a new song in my mouth, <laughs> a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in Him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, Lord, my God, are the wonders you have done. The things you have planned for us, none can compare with you. I want you to know what God has done, what God is doing, and what He has prepared for us is so, so good. 
If you have been brought out of a slimy pit, if you have been brought out of a sinking situation, if you have heard God give you a promise this week, if you have felt God give you a touch this week, if you have noticed that now you are standing on what is solid and all of a sudden where it was negativity pouring out of your mouth, there's a new song to our God. I'm here to tell you there's a new song for us as a church, and we got a reason tonight to celebrate our God. Come on, let's give him some praise like we mean it. Come on, make a joyful noise unto our God tonight. Amen? Hallelujah! Come on, hallelujah! <laughs> it's your praise that reminds the devil who fully believes in our God of his defeat. He is defeated and he will always be defeated. Amen? The victory is ours in Jesus' name. Come on, give God some more praise tonight. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, before you are seated, I want you to take a moment and I want you to make somebody you don't know feel welcome in the house of the Lord tonight. Ready, set, go. Amen. We're so glad to have everybody out with us on this cold, cold evening. Aren't you glad that you're here? Amen. If you by chance are a guest with us and you do not have a church home, on the back of the chair there in front of you, there's a visitor's packet. If you'd fill that out, turn it in, we'll make contact with you. We'd love to have you Come and be a part of our church family. So if you do not have a church home, fill one of those out, and we'd appreciate it. Let's give all of our guests a great big hand tonight. We do that. Amen. Well, how many was here last night? Man, I, this, 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 this center section right here is, is pretty well on fire. I mean, let me try over here. How many of you were here last night? Not bad. How many over here was here last night? Oh, okay, all together. How many was here one more time? <laughs> yeah, we are so glad you've been faithful to be every night a part of our revival. Now, I was not here last night. Probably not a soul missed me, but I wasn't here. Well, thank you. The reason I wasn't here, and I mean it would have to be a extraordinary, I mean it almost have to be a gift from heaven that would keep me from being here. And it just so happened God brought a little gift from heaven about 4.01 yesterday, 7 pounds, 10 ounces, Lucille Seely Don Stanford into this world. And Barbara and I had the privilege of going up and being a part of that. So we had a wonderful, wonderful time. Now, Pastor got up and he was reading the Bible and God gave him that great scripture he, he just shared with us. All I had was an old magazine from a few years ago that I was waiting in the waiting room there and I found this magazine, but it, it gave an interesting story. How many remembers Paul Harvey? A few of you old people remember that. Well, this was the November issue, but they were giving stories from years in the past. And I guessed several years ago, uh, Butterball, during Thanksgiving, had a number you could call in and you could ask any questions that you wanted to about how to cook your Thanksgiving Butterball turkey. And some lady called in, true story, just got through reading it, so I know it's real. She called in and she asked the question, how old or how long can you keep a turkey and it still be good? And of course they were conversing back and forth and she said, well, 23 years ago the company I work for gave me a turkey. I don't like turkeys. And I've kept it in the bottom of my 
freezer for 23 years. And she said, I was wanting to know if I thawed out, is it going to be okay to cook and to eat for Thanksgiving? And whoever the guy was on the 800 number said, well, I'll be honest with you. You can probably thaw it out. You can probably eat it, but it's probably not going to taste good. She said, that's what I thought. I think I'll just give it to the pastor or take it to church. <laughs> yeah. I'm here to receive an offering, and I don't want a 23-year-old offering. I want something fresh. How many, has God done something for you in this revival? Huh? Come on. If God has been good to you and God has done something special for you, I want you to give tonight, and I know God's going to bless you. Our ushers are coming. We're going to wait up on you for our, uh, what is this, Saturday evening offering, give you the opportunity to give. You give, and I know God is going to bless you in a very, very special way. Father, we love you. What a privilege. What an honor it is to be in your house. Lord, every night you have sent a man of God. You've brought them to this very place. You have placed within their heart a word. And that word has touched us and challenged us and ministered to us every night. And we pray a special anointing on our, our brother that's going to be speaking for us tonight. We know, Lord, that you've already placed a word that is burning in his heart. And he's going to share that with us in just a moment. But right now, Lord, we're going to receive an offering, and we ask that you would bless this offering. There's a lot of expenses that goes into revival, and Lord, you have always been faithful to meet every need. And so we ask tonight that right now, as we say this little simple prayer, that you would place into the heart of every person that is here, that you'd put a figure, a number, an amount in their heart that they need to sow and to give into this ministry tonight. Lord, and as they give and they are faithful in their giving, I believe with all of my heart that later on in this service, when the Word challenges them, that you're going to do something special in their life. And so we ask your blessings over this offering tonight, and we'll be careful to give you the praise. In your name we ask it. Amen. As we end revival this week, we will be taking communion during both services Sunday morning. We will also be having baptisms immediately following second service. Please sign up at our info center in the lobby if you would like to be baptized. Mark your calendars for Camp Life June 18th to the 21st. Cost is only $150 per camper. So for more information or to pick up a camp packet, please visit our info center. Don't forget this Tuesday we will be packing bags of food for the Nutrition Club. Join us at Shared Blessings at 5.30 as we help fight weakened hunger for children in our communities. Well, it is so good to see you all here tonight on this really cold, kind of make you want to stay in and have, you know, chicken and dumplings. You, thank you. That is not what I had. I had a piece of beef jerky back there. So y'all go ahead and feel sorry for me. But anyway, uh, we are so glad you're here tonight. It's, it's going to be just a wonderful night. The worship's already been wonderful. And uh, we've got a couple of exciting things happening tomorrow. For those of you that uh, are part of our church, we're going to be having special communion here in both services, 930 and 11. We're going to be bringing everything that we've experienced in our revival into the Lord's Supper. It's going to be phenomenal. Then at the close of our 11 o'clock service, we're going to have water baptisms in here. And so if you are interested in being baptized, please sign up out at the merch booth. And uh, we want to thank you for that. It's just going to be, it's going to be a great day. Y'all, we got surprises tomorrow. It's going to be so cool. So uh, anyway, I want to just take a moment and I want to recognize Pastor Brian Smith and his wife, Nancy. They pastor Northside Assembly here in town. We are honored to have you guys in the house with us this evening. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Bruce, good to see you guys. Good to see you again. And just good to be in the house of the Lord. And I have to tell you, it is a good, good day. Amen? God is good. Don't you believe that? So, night number one, we got a little bit excited. Night number two, y'all got a little more excited. 
then last night, I'm not even sure you were the same church that I've ever known for the last almost 16 years. And so I'm just going to tell you that if after tonight you return to being those people, we're going to have issues. So let's keep going. Amen. Let's keep pushing. Let's keep believing. Let's keep doing. Let's get on our feet. Let's get excited for the Word of God. And let's make some noise for Jesus. Let's make some noise for our guest speaker as he comes right now. Pastor Tashela Debro. Let's go. Come on. It's going to be good. Amen. worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, oh, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Give him praise in the house. 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 He's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. God's name is to be Praise. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. I'm Tashayla Devereaux. I'm so glad to be here tonight. Thank you for the invitation. It's, it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience so far. Uh, I pastor a church in Fort Smith called the House of Restoration. Wonderful, multicultural, non-denominational church. Uh, unfortunately, they had plans to come. We were going to bring the van, but it was uh, predicted bad weather, so we didn't try. Didn't try. Uh, my wife, she's at home with an upper respiratory infection, so please keep her in your prayers. Good friend of mine, Wayne Hawkins. Wayne, wave that hand back there. He, he rode with me. He's, he's my chauffeur and he's my bodyguard tonight, so don't nobody mess with me, all right? <laughs> Amen. I, I'm really excited to be here. I want to tell you three things about your wonderful pastors that I've learned in the short period of time that I've known them. Number one, they love themselves some Jesus. Three of y'all, three of y'all agree with that, huh? I think I might need to leave if only three people think he loves some Jesus. They love themselves some Jesus. Number two, they love themselves some you. And this community. And number three, number three, they have a heart to see the body of Christ come together, but also to see black and white and Asian, Hispanic, you name it. See all of us come together as one. That's what heaven's going to be like, right? When we get to heaven, it's not going to be black people over there and Asian people over there and, and Hispanics over there. We're going to all be one group of people worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus. Give him a hand clap of praise tonight. I've got a word for you tonight. And, and I know that your hearts are prepared for it. And I want you to know before I come forth with the word, that many of you here tonight, you've walked in a certain way. But you're going to walk out of here totally different. The, the enemy tried to fight this word all week long. He, even today, but he's defeated by the blood of Jesus. Amen. We are victorious. I want you guys to do something for me. I want you to turn to the person next to you and smile at them real big. Just turn to that person and smile real big. Now, I didn't say laugh. I said smile. <laughs> smile at them real big. Now, turn to the next person on the opposite side and smile real big at that person. See, everybody's laughing. Everybody's smiling. Even, even after I told y'all to look at the other person, y'all still smile. Now y'all smiling at me. <laughs> I didn't tell you to smile at me. But can I share something with you? See, all of us just smiled. And there was a big, beautiful smile on the outside, right? But unfortunately, not everyone in here that just smiled on the outside is smiling on the inside. See, everybody's smiling on the outside. 
But not everybody is smiling on the inside. Can I tell you why? The reason why there are some people that are not smiling on the inside is because their life is a mess. You ever heard somebody use the phrase, man, you're just a mess. But see, they say that in a sarcastic way, but there are people here tonight, your life is really a mess. It's, it's, It's a mess. There's four categories Four groups of people that that your life is is a mess in a certain area. Group number one, those of you that do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Your life is a mess, and I'm going to explain to you why a little bit later, but your life is a mess. Group number two, those of you that are in a backslidden state of being. You you love Jesus. You believe that he's the son of God, but you've walked away from God. You no longer walk hand in hand with God. And in category or group number three, those of you that are Christians but have made poor decisions. Anybody ever made any bad decisions in life? But you've made some poor decisions, and as a result, your life tonight is an absolute mess. And finally, group number four. Those of you that have been faithful to God, but yet your life is still a mess. And your life's a mess just simply because we live in a fallen world. There's an adversary. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy. Here's my unique, somebody say unique. Here's my unique but truthful response to your life being an absolute mess. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm glad that your life is a mess. I didn't expect y'all to clap on that, but I'm glad you did. I am excited that your life tonight is an absolute mess. I am so excited that tonight you're so confused and you don't know what to do. You're pulling your hair out. You're ready to scream. You're ready to give up on life. You might be ready to give up on your spouse or your kids or your job or your career. Your life is an absolute mess. And I sit back and I rejoice. I thank God that your life ushers, please lock those doors back there and let nobody leave the building. (laughs) Until after I tell you the reason why, that I'm happy that your life is a mess. Here's the reason why. Mess-filled lives tend to attach, reattach, or draw closer to the place that you were designed to always be connected to God also known as the vine let that sink in for a little bit mess filled lives tend to attach reattach or draw closer to the place that you were designed to always be connected to God also known as the vine Somebody say the vine. I don't know about you, but as a little kid, I was absolutely terrified of storms. Anybody ever been scared of storms? How many of y'all still? Never mind. But I was absolutely terrified of storms. I grew up without my father, but we lived in a mobile home. Anybody ever lived in a mobile home? When it rains, I mean, when it hails, I mean, it seems like machine guns are hitting hitting the roof. My mother lived on one end of this this mobile home, and I lived on the other, and had my little baby sister in the middle. But when it would start storming, in the middle of the night, I'd wait for it to just get a little bit of a break between the thunder, and I'd hit the beeline to my mama's room. (laughs) Now, I'm about five years old, big enough to sleep in in my own bed, right? But I wouldn't do that. As soon as I got a break between the thunder and and, and the lightning, I'd run as fast as I could and hop in the bed next to my mom. Now, see, being in the bed next to my mom wasn't good enough. We had to be skin to skin. (laughs) Can I get a witness? I don't care if it was an elbow. I don't care if it was my foot, if it was my knee. I needed to be attached or touching my mother because she was my protector. She was my provider. I didn't care what happened. The tornadoes could come as long as I am connected to my mama, to Shayla, it's going to be all right. Can I get a witness? 
See, our Heavenly Father is the same way. As long as you are connected to the vine, everything is going to be all right. Let the storms blow, let the lightning flash, let the thunder boom. As long as you're connected to your daddy, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. You're going to make it. You're going to survive the storm. John chapter 15, verse number 5. The Bible says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do absolutely nothing. Jesus said, I am the vine, you're the branches. And if you're disconnected to me, there's not a thing that you can do. Groups number one and number two represent the unsaved and backslidden. Your lives were designed to be a mess when detached from God. As an unbeliever, as, as a backslidden person, your life is designed to be a mess. Your life is designed to be chaotic. Your life wasn't designed to have joy and peace and all of the fruit of the Spirit working in your life. Because you're not with the Father. You were born to worship God. You were born with a void, and nothing can fill that void except God. Drugs can't. Alcohol can't. Sex can't. Money can't. A man can't. A woman can't. Nothing can fill that void except J-E-S-U-S. -S. Nothing can fill that void. Your life was designed without God to be a mess. I don't know if they put that little, did you put that picture up there with those raisins? Those grapes? Put that picture up if you got that. If not, we'll just keep on going. I guess we don't have it. That's okay. Group number three. Well, you, you, know what a, you know what a grape looks like when it falls from the vine, right? It shrivels up. And that's how we do. We shrivel up when we walk away from God, when we're not connected to the true vine. Group number three. You save, but you've made poor decisions. Jesus is your Savior. Your, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But, man, you've made some bad decisions. Has anybody ever done something you knew you had no business doing and you felt so bad that you didn't even want to go to God other than to repent? <laughs> hey, don't make me be my, by myself now. <laughs> Have you been there? You've done, I'm not saying you killed someone or you, you, you committed adultery or whatever, but you committed some kind of sin and you felt so bad that after you repented to God, you just didn't have much more to say to God. You felt so ashamed. And then condemnation came in when the enemy brought it. See, the Holy Spirit convicts, but the enemy condemns. And as Christians, we're going to make some poor decisions sometimes. We're going we're to make some decisions sometimes we're going to wish we hadn't have. I bet your pastor has made some, some decisions that he wish he hadn't have in the ministry. I know I have. Any, any of the pastors in the house? You, Pastoring is not easy, Past, especially at church this size. I'm praying for you. <laughs> and, and, and I want to prophesy to you, my friend. Uh, it, it's going to get bigger. It, it's it's going to get larger. And, and I want to share this with you as well. Your, your, your church is, 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 is not going to grow because of this revival, but your church is going to grow as a result of, of this revival. I, I, I just, I just, yeah. not because of it, but, but as a result of it, God, God has already done a thing in you tonight and, and, and a few weeks, a few nights ago, but God's going to continue to take what's been poured out already and continues to just pour it out over and over and over and over again. But see, you guys aren't going to be selfish with it, though. You're going to go ahead and give it to other people. And there's going to be a fire lit on the bottom side of you that you just can't, you can't contain and keep to yourself. And then I just believe that people that come in contact with you, something, God's going to open a door for you to be able to pour inside of people that you don't even know. Church is going to be right there in Walmart. Church is going to take place in the grocery store. 
church is going to take place at the ball game. This right here is just the building. You are the church. Can I get a witness? Somebody shout, God is good. Say all the time. And all the time, God is good. Man, this reminds me of the house. I could just preach tonight. I could just, I, I, I love it. I love it when you talk back to me. Not my kids, but the church. You know what I'm saying? God is faithful. Group number three, you're saved, but you've made poor decisions. I've got some encouragement for you. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. This is what Jesus said. Come unto me, all who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. King James says, come unto me, all you that labor and that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I want to ask the musician, if you will, come and play in, in the background for me real lightly. Group number four, faithful Christians. You love the Lord, the, your God, with all your heart and your soul, your mind, and your strength. You're faithful to God. You're obedient to God. But yet you found yourself in a mess. Your life tonight is a mess. Not because of sin in your life. Not because you've walked away from God. You've been faithful to God. But just simply because we live in a fallen world. Paul said, in the last days, perilous times or troublesome times shall come. There's a song that we sang in the church that I, used to, that I grew up in, trouble don't last always. I, I don't know all the words and I don't want you to play that tonight, but troubles don't last always. Here's how the psalmist said, Psalms chapter 30, verse number 5. For his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. I love this last part. Here's the word for you. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Your life is a mess tonight. Your life is a total mess tonight. I want, to, I want to tell you something about a mess. Have you guys ever seen a baby that the diaper begins to kind of <laughs> sag a little bit like a, like a hammock? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and they start walking like this. Now, I don't know about you, but in my house, my mama used to say, you got to do number one or you got to do number two. So, so y'all understand, right? We, we all don't say, do I need to explain what number one is? Y'all know what number two is, right? So I can keep preaching, right? This baby walking like this. Because that baby didn't made a... And that mess don't smell good, right? So... We being the loving parents that we are, we don't want that baby staying in that. So what do we do? We stretch our arms out as far as we can. Pick that baby up. Take that baby to the bathroom or the bedroom and lay that baby down. Then we get some tissue and some wet wipes, some more tissue, some latex gloves, <laughs> safety glasses, and a respirator. <laughs> then you call for your wife, right? <laughs> Y'all need to clean some babies, I can tell. No, you don't do that. Have you ever noticed sometimes when a baby's dirty and, and stinky, they, they've done number two? They'll come set in your lap. <laughs> Has anybody ever experienced that? <laughs> See, for y'all that's not raising y'all's hands, the reason why you ain't raising your hands because you was that baby that went and sat in somebody's lap. <laughs> the baby's dirty. Listen, they, they want mama or daddy to clean them up. 
you take that baby that's dirty, you set him on the bed, you get all your stuff together, and you lovingly, I don't care if it's up their back, I don't care where it is, down their legs. Now, hey, listen, let's be real. We done cleaned it up down their legs, right? I don't know how it got up their back and up their neck, but it gets there. <laughs> what do you do as a loving parent? You clean them up. Every bit of it. I don't care if it takes you 10 minutes to get it. I don't care if you gagging when you do it. You're going to make sure you get that baby cleaned up, right? Now, if we clean up our babies like that, how much more? I said, how much more will our Heavenly Father take us and clean us up from the inside out? Regardless of, of how you got the way you are, regardless of what your filth might be, regardless of what your mess might be, God's not going to say, get back from me, you, 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 you stinky child. No, God's going to take you. And he's going to pull you real close. And he's not going to condemn you. And he's not going to sit there and beat you upside the head because of what you've done. See, because some of the mess you're in, you've caused it. I've caused some mess up on myself. Some of the mess you're in, somebody else caused it. But yet it's still there. Some of the mess you're in, poor decision making. But then some of the mess you're in is just simply because you're a child of the king. And you're an enemy to the enemy. I like that. You're an enemy to the enemy. Because you're a child of the king. So no matter what your mess is, God will clean it up. See, the Holy Spirit told me a few days ago that there'll be several people here tonight that are full of mess. It doesn't matter if you cause it or not. God is no respecter of persons. What can wash away my sin? <laughs> Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What's your mess tonight? Doesn't matter how long you've been walking in it, God is here to clean you up. Sure, he can do it tomorrow, but tomorrow's not promised to you. Let him clean you up tonight. God's not going to judge you. God's not going to ridicule you. God's not going to remind you next week about what you've done. And remember, some of the mess you didn't even bring up on yourself. But mess is still mess. The person that you smiled at a few minutes ago when they smiled back at you, they smiled on the outside. But they were messed up on the inside. But I've got some good news. The Savior is here tonight to clean you up and to make you whole. That's what revival is all about. I'm going to ask every person in the house, if you would, to close your eyes and bow your heads. I'm going to ask that nobody look around. Father, in the name of Jesus, I have preached according to what you placed within my heart, within my spirit. And God, I know that I know that I know that I know that I heard from you. And Father, I know that I know that I know that you're going to do some miraculous things in this house tonight. Father, whoever the people are that are in this room, that are a mess for whatever reason, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that they would not allow the enemy to rob them from you wanting to set them free tonight. You wanting to deliver them. You wanting to make them whole. I break every generational curse by the blood of Jesus tonight. I destroy every stronghold in the name of Jesus. 
Holy Spirit, do what you desire to do in the hearts of these, your people. I pray that they would acknowledge the truth that that is them and allow you the opportunity to set them free. With every head still bowed and every eye closed, nobody looking around. Here's number one. Is your life a mess because you, you are disconnected from the vine? Jesus is not your Savior. You've never invited him into your heart as your personal Savior. And I want you to know that if you were to die tonight, hell would be your home. But hell was not created for mankind. Heaven was. You don't have to be perfect to go to heaven. All you have to do is believe that God has sent Jesus to die for your sins and he resurrected from the grave three days later. And repent of your sins. The Bible says thou shalt be saved. If you're here tonight and you're ready to surrender your heart to Jesus, lift your hand up right where you are. Right where you are. Just lift your hand up. God bless you, young, young lady. God, anybody else? God bless you over here. Anybody else right where you are, just, just gently lift your hand up in the back. I see you back there. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else right where you are, just lift your hand up and put it right back down. God sees your hand and so does I. God wants you to be connected to the vine. Several people in the house are raising their hands for salvation. That's what it's all about. Intercessors, I pray that you're praying right now. Here's number two, question number two. Your life is a mess because you've walked away from the vine. You've backslid. I want you to know that God still loves you. His love toward you is absolutely unconditional. God doesn't love you any less, and he doesn't love you any more, simply because his love towards you has always been unconditional. You don't have to get it right first. You don't have to stop doing this and that God wants you to come just the way that you are. For rededication, lift your hand up right where you are. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Rededication, just lift your hands up. I want to see your hands. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Anybody else? Rededication, lift your hand up. Say, Pastor, I, I want to give my, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I want a fresh start, a new beginning with Christ tonight. Lift your hand up. Anybody else? Number three, God bless you, ma'am. Anybody else? Number three, your life is a mess because of poor decisions. Your life's a mess because of poor decisions. Well, I want you to know that God can help you make those things right. You may not be able to change what you've done, but God can help you to make those things right. Come unto me, all ye that labor and that are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. If that's you, group number three, lift your hand up. Poor decision making. God bless you all over the house. God bless you all over the house. You may put your hands down. Here's my last question. How many of me, how many of you would say to me tonight, Preacher, I love Jesus with all of my heart. I'm in right standings with God, but I'm going through a battle right now. My life is an absolute mess. I'm doing everything that I need to be doing for God. And my life's a mess tonight. Preacher, I'm struggling. Will you pray for me? If that's you, lift your hand up. Lift your hand up. If that's you. Hands all over the house. Hands all over the house. I want you to do one last thing. Number one, I want you to stand up on your feet all over the house. Everybody stand to your feet. Typically, I would ask everybody to come at the, at the same time, but I want to do this differently because, uh, number one, your pastor has given me permission to be able to do the altar call tonight. But normally, I would have everybody to come at the same time, but I saw some hands that were raised to give their hearts to Jesus for the very first time. Some of those people were kids, teenagers. For those of you that raise your hands tonight to give your heart to Christ, I want you to come right now. 
I want you to come right now. You raise your hand to give your heart to Jesus. I want you to come right now. Let's celebrate as they're coming right now. I saw other hands out there. I saw other hands for salvation that you're not here. I want you to come. Nothing to be embarrassed about. This is between you and God. We're going to celebrate with you. The angels in heaven are rejoicing right now. For those of you that raise your hand to give your heart, even if you didn't raise your hand, but you know that you need to be here giving your heart to Jesus, I want you to come. celebrate with you. We celebrate with you. Your daughter. Group number two, rededicate your life. You're here to rededicate your life. I want you to come right now. Those of you that raise your hand for rededication, that's just your way of saying, God, here's a new start with you and I. I want you to come. keep clapping. They're still coming. Let's keep clapping. Even if you didn't raise your hand, but you know that you need to be here to rededicate your life, I want you to come. And for all the rest of you, groups three and four, your life is a mess because of poor decision making. And your life is a mess just simply because you're a man or a woman of God. I want you to come. I want to, I want to pray for you. I want you to come. I want you to come. Everybody that's, even if your hand wasn't lifted, but your life is a mess right now, I want you to come. I want you to come. Let's continue to clap as they're coming tonight. Even if your hand wasn't lifted, but you know that you need to be here tonight, you just need prayer. You just simply need prayer. I want you to come. I want you to come. Pastor T, this is what, this is what revival is all about. This is what revival is all about right here. This is what revival is all about. Right here. Anybody else before we pray? Even if you didn't raise your hand, I want you to come. There's others out there right now. You know that you want to make this walk to the altar, but you hadn't. I want you to come. I want to pray for you before you do. I want you to come. I want you to come. So I can, I can just hear your hearts beating right now. You, you, you're wanting to walk away from that chair. Just do it. Nike says just do it. I just, God wants you to just do it tonight. Slap the devil in his face by getting out of your chair and come up here and, and do what needs to be done. Do what needs to be done. Pastor T, I'm going to pray for everyone in general, but there are two here for salvation. As the pastor, I'll let you come up and, and, and lead them to Christ. For those of you that are in the audience, if you will, if you don't feel uncomfortable, stretch your hands toward everyone that's here at the altar. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want to pause for just a few seconds. Pastor T, can I give a word of knowledge? Young lady right here. What is your name? Christy. For those of you that may not be familiar with what a word of knowledge is, let me explain. A word of knowledge is where it's one of the gifts of the Spirit, where God will give you supernatural knowledge of something or someone that you normally wouldn't know. Christy, is that your first name, Christy? Holy Spirit has revealed to me that you've come a long way. 
I don't know you, don't know anything about you. But you've come a long way. And you've been experiencing things here lately that's got you ready to quit. It's got you ready to give up. You can't quit. You can't give up. You've come way too far. There is a very special anointing upon you. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for you. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of them the things that God has in store for you. You cannot quit. You can't stop. You've got to keep pushing. If you've got to push by yourself, you push by yourself. But you won't have to push by yourself because the Holy One is going to be holding your hand. He's going to help you overcome every obstacle that you go through. I want you to know this. You are not by yourself. You are not alone. You are not alone. You may feel like you're by yourself, but you are not alone. God has been hearing you. God has heard you. God heard your cry. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come into agreement with your word, O oh God. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into her heart the things that you have in store for her. Lord, I recognize that the enemy has a desire to abort the plan that you have for her. But I come against that right now in the name of Jesus. I bind it right now in Jesus' name, and I loose everything that you have in store for her, Father. I declare it to be done in Jesus' name. So it's been said, so shall it be in Jesus' name. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise tonight. Is this your home church, Tommy? It is? He's the man. Is Tommy a minister? He can be. Tommy, is this your, your family right here? Girlfriend, okay. Okay. Tommy, I don't know if you recognize this or not, but there's a mantle upon you to preach the word of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The mantle of God is upon you. I speak to you through heavenly revelation, through word of knowledge. You've been called to preach, my friend. I've got a question for you. And you will not embarrass me if you say, preacher, you missed it by 10 miles. <laughs> Does that resonate in your spirit? Church, you're going to witness something before your very eyes. See, what I'm saying to you right now, if it's not confirmation to you, put it on the back burner and see if it comes to fruition. Or if you know it's totally out of left field, throw it away. But I'm telling you right now, the, the mantle of God is up on you to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands up on Tommy. I thank you for your call, O oh God. I thank you for heavenly revelation. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you use this man in a mighty way to bring you glory and to bring people to your feet, Father, and to make a difference in the lives of many people. I declare it to be done in Jesus' name. And Father, if this is not confirmation to him right now, and Lord, this be of you, and I know that it is, Confirm it to him over and over and over and over again. And may he step forth in due season. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. You're praying, Mama. Very much. Mama, trouble don't last always. Trouble don't last always. How, how old are you if you don't mind me asking? 27. You've been experiencing some troubled times, troublesome times. And Mama's been praying when you didn't know. You're here tonight because mama been praying. That's why you're here tonight. Can I share something with you? Those troublesome times that you've been going through, God didn't do it, but God's using it. God didn't do it, but God's using it. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. That vine I was talking about a few minutes ago. Yeah, I don't think it was up on the screen, but I had this picture of some, some grapes that had fallen from that vine and they shriveled up. It's time for you to run back to God. It's time for you to run back to God. See, God's using those situations, those, and some of them have been dangerous, dangerous situations. Some of those situations your mama don't even know about. Am I right about that? See, only God would know something like that. I don't even know you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I cancel every demonic attack that was plotted for this woman. I bind every one of them right now in the name of Jesus. I declare that she shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I declare that 2018 shall be the year of the turnaround for this young lady right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I declare it to be done in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for this faithful mother. I thank you for faithful mothers across this land. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace right now. I speak joy right now. I speak strength right now. I speak hope over her right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I declare it to be done. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray for every person that's at this altar right now. Every one of them, Father, I declare healing upon them. I declare strength upon them, Father. I declare revival within their yes. spirits, Father, in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus. I pray that those that are broken, they shall be made whole right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I speak life over you tonight. I speak wholeness over you tonight. I speak unity over you tonight. In the glorious name of of Jesus, I declare it to be done. Man, woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmities in the name of Jesus. And I declare that whom the Father has set free, come on, that's right, is free in Amen. deed. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to say a sinner's prayer together as a church. Two, three hands went up for salvation. Doesn't matter the age. All that matters is this heart. The Bible says if you'll believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. 
And so we're going to pray it together as a church because I believe everybody that is here has prayed this at one time or another and accepted Christ. So if you're a believer, pray it out loud like it was the first time. If you are not and you didn't come forward, pray it and believe it, and Jesus will come into your heart. And if you're down here and you're praying it for the first time, believe it and the Lord will come into your heart. If you have walked away and you're rededicating yourself to the Lord, pray this and believe it. He's there with you. Amen? So let's pray out loud. You ready? Say, Dear Jesus, I believe in you, that you are the Son of God. You died and rose again, and I choose you to be my Savior, to be my God. Come into my life, and from this moment on, I choose to follow you, and I thank you that you love me, and for the rest of my life, I want to live my life in love to you, in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give God praise for that tonight. That's so good. That's so good. Come on, did you appreciate Pastor DeShayla? Come on. Now, let me tell you something. The good news about being messy is we have a God we can always come to that will help us. So tonight, before we go, we're not dismissed yet. There's going to be food out there for you to buy still. But let's worship the Lord together one more time. You can stay at this altar and worship. But I want us just to love on him just one more time together as a church before we close out these night services. Haven't they been so fun? Oh my goodness. I love it. So we're going to worship together and then we'll come up here and give you a dismissal. Okay, come on. Let's love on Jesus. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the
He loves you. Amen. Do you believe that tonight? Come on, do you believe it? He loves us. Amen. Hallelujah. That is good. That is so, so good. I just rejoice at the hand of God and His movement upon our lives. Each word that was given that was so sweet and so special. Each night, the message that's been delivered, it has just been outstanding. Amen. Amen. We love that. Amen. Come on, give God a praise for it. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be here at 9, 30, and 11. If you do not have a church home and you're looking, we would love for you to come try us out. There are many wonderful churches in our area. If you do have a church home that is not here, we encourage you to be at your church home and support and be behind the vision there. Life Church, we love you. We thank you for being here. Be safe going home. Please go see Marty. There's more food to be bought. Have some sandwiches. Enjoy yourself. God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. <laughs>